Well everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra and see how this specific phone holds up in 2023. Now I will definitely tell you, this is a pretty good phone still, even though it's been out for almost three years now. I think Samsung back in 2020, you know, dominated with this phone and I was glad they made another Ultra lineup, which was even more expensive and even more premium than their Plus lineup at that time. So if you want to pick up this phone or some other phones I would recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of this specific phone, on the front of this device, we have a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It's a 120 hertz panel, 1440p, and I will definitely tell you, Samsung just, you know, absolutely wrecked it with this device. I mean, it was a beautiful display. You had the hole punch display as well. And if you kind of remember coming from the S10s, S those were really good panels as well. And the fact that Samsung was even able to make it even better than that was even more astonishing in my opinion. So by far, the front of this phone still looks very good. You have a USB type C port on the bottom of this phone as well. And you still have that micro SD card slot on this device too. So that was some other stuff that I really did kind of like about this type of phone. Having that micro SD card slot is beautiful. And honestly, that does kind of future proof this device like a ton. If you were to get a phone like this, and you were able to keep it for like up until now, you would have seen the progression of this phone having still the 120 hertz, still the micro SD card slot, when a lot of other phones, like a lot of Samsung phones are like just 1080p now, and they don't even have micro SD card slots. So this phone still has a lot of capability there, which is honestly very, very awesome. Now in the back of this phone, we do have our standard glass back. So this is the one thing that's kind of changed with the you know newer Samsungs. And that's something that I kind of like a lot about the newer Samsungs is that they did change and transition over basically to those frosted glass backs, which will look and feel amazing. So in this case, it's kind of tough a little bit to tell like, you know, the, the, the premium feeling aspect of this device, but it still feels very smooth. It still feels very fast. And I, I will definitely tell you, it's still a very, very premium feeling phone for sure. Now you have this very good camera setup on the top left corner that's just, you know, has so much capability. You have wireless charging on this phone, reverse wireless charging, IP certification. And overall, when I look at this phone and I compare it against really all the other Ultra phones, this phone has held up very, very well. Maybe it's not perfect, but I do think at that point, Samsung did a really good job. And I still think it's a very, very good feeling phone. And overall, it just there's really just not that much to complain about on the exterior of this device. So in terms of that, it definitely gets a thumbs up for me on the outside. Now in the camera quality, like I said before, this thing has just a massive size camera on the back. So it's like technically a triple camera setup. So it has a 108 megapixel wide angle lens, 48 megapixel periscope telephoto lens, a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. And then it has like a depth lens as well. That's 0.3 megapixels. The front camera though is even you know better. I mean, a 40 megapixel wide angle lens on the front. It's not a better front facing camera, but it's still a pretty decent camera on the front. Now I will definitely tell you the camera module on this camera is crazy. Like it's big, it's you know pretty thick if you ask me. And I think that's a pretty good thing. When you have a phone like this that's this big and this you know crazy quality, it's good to have a camera that's just pretty much the top of the top. And there's so much room in this phone that Samsung was able to put so many features in this camera as well. So then a phone like this, I mean you can zoom in and zoom out a ton. That's kind of typical. You're getting 8K capability on this phone too, which is awesome. Not a lot of phones can film in 8K. This is one of those phones that has that capability. So I think that's a really cool thing we have going here too. On top of that, we do have 4K60 on the front as well, which is another big advantage for this type of phone. So I definitely do think when it comes down to this device, you have a lot of capability. It's definitely not perfect, but I definitely do think that Samsung you know, just killed it with this device with that with that camera. And definitely it's you know it's just such a good camera for sure. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up here. Now, in terms of the actual software and the longevity portion of this phone, this is one of the more interesting aspects of this device because we don't know for a fact like how long this phone is going to last like for sure. The only issue that I've kind of ran into with this type of device is that for the most part, we're kind of potentially on one of the last versions of software this phone is going to, you know, end off on. Now, the Samsung Galaxy S10 ended off with, you know, One UI 4. The S20s could potentially end off with One UI 5. I do think there's a chance where Samsung could end up making these phones last even longer. And if that ends up being the case, I think that would be awesome. I think that would be probably one of the more important things Samsung can do. And that should be something they would, cons they should consider, you know, by increasing the longevity of these phones, that would make 
make these phones just look so much better to the average person, I feel like. And that would be a very cool thing, you know. So I would highly recommend for them to go and check that out. And I think if they were to go and expand the longevity of these phones, because you have to think about it, the hardware is there. Like the hardware of this phone with the screen, with even the power inside of it, it's such a good, powerful phone. And I love that about this device. Unfortunately, with this phone, it's just, I don't know, you know, this is like what the last cusp I think of like Samsung starting to transition to longer software versions. But I think this phone could end up getting One UI 6 and even One UI 7 as well. So I guess we're going to see what happens in the future. But in the software longevity portion, that kind of covers it up here. Now, in the actual performance of this phone, this device had that Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 chipset inside of it with 12 gigs of RAM on the base model. And we also had a 16 gigabyte of RAM option as well. Now, I just want to hit on the memory of this thing. Like even 12 gigabytes of RAM on a you know phone like this is just more than enough. A lot of phones, including the S22s, still have eight gigabytes, and that's the only model you can get of them. This phone from 2020 started off with 12, which is crazy. And the craziest thing above all is that you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM in a phone like this. I can't think of any reason why I would need 16 gigabytes of RAM on a device, but the craziest thing is, is that this thing has the same exact amount of RAM as my MacBook, you know, so it's just crazy to me just how good of a job I would say Samsung at least did with the hardware internally of this phone. And that 865 chipset is still kind of decently powerful, like it's still talked about a lot, I feel like, in a lot of different like Android emulation devices, a lot of those devices still use these types of chipsets because they're a little bit cheaper now to kind of, you know, develop and everything and kind of source, but that's still a decent chipset to kind of play a lot of games on if you're somebody who wants to go ahead and just use it as a you know basic device well you have more than enough power for text messaging and like google messages and google whatever else like this is such a good phone in that perspective and i love the fact that you have that 120 hertz display as well because it makes that phone feel so much faster and smoother now when compared to phones like the galaxy s22 you're definitely not going to be getting as great of a performing phone compared to those ones but i still think that this is a pretty decent performing phone and it's definitely more shocking in that perspective because it's still a very smooth phone all the s20s in my opinion were very smooth phones even the s20 fe is a very smooth phone too so to end it off with the battery life this thing had a 5000 mAh battery inside of it and that is a massive size battery to have on a phone like i mentioned i mean when you're getting a device like this you are going to be getting a phone that is pretty much not only supported not only is it still very kind of powerful but you're also getting a massive size battery in this device and i think all the ultras had some sort of battery size like this so to kind of sum up this video, what I'll tell you, I think Samsung completely did a, such a great job with this phone during that time. I think it's a great device for sure. The only thing I'm even a little bit hesitant on is the software updates. I don't know, again, if this thing's going to be lasting an extra year or two. It's going to be getting security updates probably for a little bit of time, but it's not going to be as long of a supported device compared to other devices. So that is probably the best thing I can tell you is to probably consider maybe the S21 Ultra. That phone is going to last a little bit longer than this one, and that would probably make more sense than anything else. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, Please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.